today on what you said tells me the science should be animals on time. And also sea world, do you consider that as part of it? my mind? Water oh, 100%, absolutely, absolutely. We're one of our one of our major campaigns at the moment is actually um, focused on aquariums more generally. So not just um, not just those that have cetaceans in captivity, sea worms and dolphins, but also fish, fish and, and crabs and crustaceans and all those other animals that often get overlooked. It's something that we the, the campaign I mentioned about the birds um, and the and the campaign about aquariums. We try as much as we can to sort of focus on. Perhaps campaigns that other people don't don't necessarily focus on. I think for me, the forgotten animals in the zoo industry are the birds and the marine animals. Uh, perhaps now, with the exception, thank goodness, for documentaries like that fish, which has just had an incredible impact. I'd love to see that extend to the wider zoo industry. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Um, I wondered, what do you think could be done immediately with? Um, like the psychotic elephants and the psychotic bears that we see, you know, those, those yeah. kind of animals. I think it's really difficult to say, and I'm not, I'm not an animal behaviourist, so um, I, I don't have the kind of the, the deep scientific knowledge. I do know that there is uh, there is evidence to show that once an animal has experienced those those um, behaviours to a certain extent, it's used as a coping mechanism. As I mentioned, it can actually change the brain. I know there's been studies and um, behaviour studies on primates which have shown that. The only the only experience I have personally, I've worked in a rescue centre in Cornwall, the guys are here today, Wild Futures, for ex pet primates. And some of those monkeys show very, very serious um, swaying, rocking, self harming, and all of that. Without exception, every single one of them, when given correct care, everyone at that sanctuary agrees that monkeys shouldn't be in captivity, but better care, the ability to be away from. Um, away from the public gaze, the ability to live in sort of slightly more normal social groups, they've all improved immensely. But I don't think any of them have managed to completely overcome those behaviours because there's this, once the damage is done, there isn't necessarily a fix for it. So for us, sanctuaries, which are run very well, which are very much focused on the animals, which aren't focused upon public entertainment, um, are perhaps a step forward. But I think ultimately it's about looking the wider context and saying, well, actually, let's just stop breeding elephants and zoos because this is what happens when, when elephants are bred captive. So I don't know if that answers your question properly. I don't know that there's anything immediate that we can do, I think, uh, which is frustrating. But are you, are, have you done it, have you targeted any individual animals like the other folks to the campaign coming with the road in the sanctuary? I suppose the problem is, I'm not sure where she would I did. I met with the, with the director of Chester Zoo because I, I wrote a blog about, about her actually, and he contacted me and said, Will you come and meet with me? And he said to me that this is, this is her coping mechanism and she's in the best situation she could be. Um, <coughs> and it's sort of like, well, you can't, I don't really know where you would go from there because once she's in captivity, she can't be released. You would only be moving her from one place to another. So I know that sounds a bit, kind of sounds a bit hopeless, doesn't it? But, um, I think that's why I've got to take it right back to the beginning and stop it from happening in the first place because once it starts, it's incredibly difficult. So, yeah. Anybody else? Argentina, we were him about yeah. Argentina, is that right? Um, and Yuppie was, is it Yuppie or is it Mexico? There's, there's two polar bears, is it somewhere in South America? There's two polar bears that are in, that are in trouble and there's big campaigns surrounding them. Um, and they said, so they raised funds and it was all to do, and one of the major national papers got involved. And they raised, they raised, they raised funds, they set up this kind of polar bear habitat, and then suddenly they got this completely different polar bear because it seemed as though the polar bear they were talking about potentially rescuing was never there was never any agreement that that polar bear could move 
Um, and so now they have an X breeding polymer from European Zoo, so it's kind of, he's, he's a, a surplus animal. Um, they initially said that there would be no way that they'd be breeding them, um, but there's now sort of fine print on their website saying, well actually if we can provide the, the correct welfare provision then we might breed them. So we've been calling on them to, um, to make a firm commitment that they won't breed any more polar bears, but we're yet to see what actually happens with that. Yeah, there are there's still these breeding elements. Elephants are still part of European breeding programs. It's still something which doesn't really look like it's going to stop, unfortunately. Not for the time being, anyway. One more question. <laughs> Your hand went up first. Hi. Um, you've always mentioned the uh, government stock, uh, government funding reports. Yes. And I wondered how it came that government was interested in doing reports and what was that show? That's a very good question. Um, the ADAS report into, so for the first one I mentioned was the, was the elephant study, wasn't it? And that was carried out by um, Ross Club on the country level, George Morrison. Um, and they were looking, it was recognizing within the zoo industry that there were problems with, with elephant welfare. And I understand the government commissioned it with the, um, with the cooperation of the zoo industry actually because there was this recognition that there were serious concerns and wanted to gather the evidence. Um, but then there was sort of an elephant working group set up. I'm not really sure what then happened because elephants are still being bred in the UK. New elephant exhibits are opening up. So it was the elephant was triggered by welfare concerns. And the, to, uh, to be honest, I don't know what triggered the, the move to do the one about education and conservation. Um, I could perhaps find out if you, if you come downstairs to the store and I take your address. I'm actually interested now you've asked to, to see why it was triggered. But 